I'm continuing on the series that I have been teaching on and preaching on, on reverence, being restored to the house of God. I had started to uh, make some videos yesterday, and I want to continue on the series today. When we approach the house of God, we need to have reverence for God's house. And during times of where people are ministering body ministry to others, where people are coming up forward to get prayed for, to have elders lay, lay hands on them and anoint them with oil, there should not be any talking going on during the service. There should not be any cell phones going off. There should not be any other distracting noise which could quench the Holy Spirit of God and cause the dove to lift. Reverence means that we are asked, we are wanting the full manifestation of God's Spirit to come in. A lot of people don't know what full manifestation really is. It's where the glory of God is, is manifest in a building, well, in, in a place where, where people are assembled, and its glory manifests by people falling under the power, people dancing in the Spirit, souls being saved, people being healed, people being delivered from demons. We need to approach the house of God as though as if we were as, as, as those if God were there. Reverence can be lost in any facet of a church meeting. Even in the preaching. You see, signs and wonders will not follow if there is an irreverential preaching that takes place that is based out of unbelief, based out of tradition, whether it's Pentecostal tradition, whether it's Baptist tradition, Methodist tradition, Nazarene tradition, or what, or what have you tradition. Signs and wonders do not follow tradition and they don't follow unbelief. They certainly don't follow uh, preaching out of bitterness or manipulation. The signs and wonders follow the preaching of the word. You will never ever have signs, particularly following being money-minded or being or being, or capitalizing on, on something that's that deviates from the truth of God's word. Reverence means that we learn to follow the divine order. I'm just re-emphasizing and restating some things that I had said earlier. <clears throat> there is a divine order. Brother Hagen was prophesying, or, or he was teaching rather, in his book on plans, purposes, and pursuits, how that he, when he was giving a prophetic word, making a prophetic unction that there were people that were beginning to clap while he was prophesying. And he said that there, there were times when he had was able to get the anointing back with it when the people would stop. But sometimes the anointing would fly away and he would not be able to continue prophesying. It's inappropriate to be clapping during a prophetic word being given or after a prophetic word is given. Again, we are not to put God, we should not be putting God on the level of man. Men applaud men, but we should not applaud God. I know some people will not receive this, some people will not believe what I'm saying. I encourage you to go to your prayer closet and talk to the Lord about these things. Hype and sensationalism will not bring the lost to Jesus Christ. At least in, in mass. There may be some souls that the souls that may be saved. Do you realize that there's there's certain preaching and Christian and, and music 
and things in Christendom that may be good for baby Christians, but they're not good for mature Christians. It's God's will that every Christian come to a place of maturity in their lives. It isn't his will that we be stuck in imperfection, as it were. Well, there's no perfect church, there's no perfect Christian. But are we going on to perfection? Are we going on to maturity? Are we going on to maturity by growing up in the, in the things of the Spirit of God? Where we learn to worship God in spirit and in truth, as the word says. That is the spiritual protocol for the New Testament. The precedent that Jesus set forth when he was talking to the woman at the well and basically giving her, showing her the way of life. He was basically giving her a message of salvation even before salvation was really made available to us because he had not yet died on the cross. But he did say to the woman at the well that the hour is coming when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. That means that again, as I had said earlier, that we praise him with the fruit of our lips and with the raising up of our hands. And not even doing it with any half-hearted passion, but with a, with a full-throttle passion. Yet that we understand there are times when it can be silent, it can be quiet, we can be in a holy hush, we can be still and know that He is God. That's difficult for some Christians to really grasp, to be still and know that He is God. Sit alone in your, in the, in your private devotional time and just listen to God's voice. I know I'm preaching to myself when I say that. That's not easy for me to do. I'll be very transparent with you. In my life, I've recognized where the demonic spirits, I've recognized where there have been demonic spirits that have kept me from being able to get into God's presence. And I've had to do a little bit of self-deliverance. Yeah, I don't believe that Christians can have demons. Well, the Bible does not say anything specifically when it says when he when Jesus gave the charge to his disciples to go cast out demons. The people to whom Jesus ministered deliverance to in the accounts of the Gospels, the Bible does not say whether they were believers or whether they were unbelievers. It simply said he simply gave the charge to, to cast out demons. But that's kind of another subject. I want to give sort of a, 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 an altar call to those of you watching, and I realize my time's almost up. But if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to get, ask Him to give you the grace to repent of your sins and come and accept Him as Lord and Savior today. For the true worshipers will, father the, will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, and you can become a worshiper of Jesus Christ today by worshiping in spirit. How do you worship Him, how do you worship him in spirit? By inviting Him to come and live in your heart. Asking him, asking him to come and live in you and live his life in you and through you. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Don't be stressed. Worship the best. Praise God. I'll be back again to preach on another topic. Lord bless you.